Once 12D is installed from the DVD, we can start 12D by double clicking on the 12D Model 10 icon on the desktop. The project selection panel appears. It gives you a list of any previous projects that you've been working in. You also have the option of browsing to a project down the bottom. But in our case, we're going to create a new project. So we click on New. Here we browse to the folder. We already have the training data set up in a particular folder. So we browse to C, 12D, 10, Training, Design, Getting Started Basic. Click on Select Folder and we're going to type in Stage 1. We can then click Create. When we start 12D for the first time in any project, it comes up with the Set Out Project Details panel. This can be filled in by just simply typing over on the right hand side in the value area. These details can also be customised by somebody in your organisation. Once you've typed in the required information, you click Set, then Finish. We're just going to have a quick look at what we have on the screen firstly. Up the top we have a series of menus. They are selected by left clicking on one of the words. As you then move your cursor down the menus, you'll see little side menus. Any of the menus that have a bracket around the top wording can be clicked on and then pinned up for use later. To exit one of these panels, we click on the red X and that will close it down. Below the main menu, we have a series of icons. This first area is the CAD control bar. It's made up of a name selection. By selecting a name it will then populate the rest of the toolbar. We can manually type in a model or pick it from a list. We can pick a color from a predefined list of colors. We can type in a height that will be applied to any string that we create. The line style can be either typed in or selected from a list. We can give the line a weight. The weight will only be shown if it's a solid line type or a single line type, which is line type 1. The arrow down button uh, can be used to flag the tinnability of the point. We'll go through tinnability in detail a bit later. And the same as icon is designed to match an existing string to pre-populate the, the section before it. This next section is the symbols area where we can pick a symbol again from a list, give it a height and a rotation. If the information on the screen is just a little bit over to the edge, you can just move the things around. The text toolbar is the next one where we can use a text favorite. We can select the font or we can give it the font a size. Down on the next row we have the snaps which again we'll go into in more details. Depending on which version of Windows you're running they may be highlighted blue if they're activated or they may uh, look slightly different. We have the Snaps CAD menu, which is used to enhance your picking in 12D. And we have the Search Toolbar. The Search Toolbar is very useful for finding an option. Say if we type in a keyword tin, it will then show us any option in 12D that has the word tin in it. On the left hand side we now have again a series of icons. This time each icon has a small right arrow at the bottom right. That means that if you hold down on the icon, it will show you a flyout toolbar. By moving out slowly, you can see a data tooltip for each one. We're now going to maximize plan view one. This is done by either clicking on the maximize button or just double clicking up in this area here. And the recalc panel will be placed just down the bottom right. We will come back to the use of the recalc panel later in the tutorial. Down the bottom of the screen there is an output window. If you hover over the words output window, a little output window will float up. This is designed to flash blue if there's an error and you can simply go down to the output window and locate the error. 
each view has its own number or wording and the view type will be a different little symbol. And finally as we move our cursor around the screen you'll see a X and Y value just below the cursor at the moment indicating where you are.